The price of prescription drugs is a pocketbook issue that affects Americans from every walk of life. Much of the focus has been on the cost of brand name drugs. But as John Yang tells us now, a new multi-state lawsuit alleges many generic drug makers have been artificially raising the price of their medications, drugs used to treat everything from minor infections to chronic diseases like HIV. Anna, about 90% of the prescriptions filled in the United States are for generic drugs, medications whose patents have expired. Congress created the generic drug industry to drive prices down through increased competition. But a lawsuit filed by 43 states in Puerto Rico alleges that leading drug makers conspired to inflate the prices of more than 100 widely used generic drugs, sometimes by as much as 1,000%. Connecticut Attorney General William Tong's office has been leading the investigation, and he joins us now. Mr. Tong, thanks so much for joining us. John, thanks for having me. First of all, give us a sense of the scope. How much money are we talking about? Billions of dollars. Uh, we think this is potentially the largest private sector cartel in history. Uh, and what we're seeing is pervasive, widespread, industry-wide price fixing and dividing up of market share. And you're alleging that some of the drugs are involved are widely used. Some of our viewers may have them in their medicine cabinets right now. What are yes. we talking about? So common antibiotics like doxycycline, which I use every day, Z-Packs, which we use, um, I use sometimes when my kids are sick. I have a 13-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 7-year-old. You know, adults use Z-Packs for bronchitis and, and a host of ailments. There are some simple antibiotic creams that we use, um, you know, when we get a cut or a scratch. These are drugs that we use every day, and they're drugs that Americans rely on to live. And what's the evidence you have to back up your claims? So we have text messages, emails, we have cooperating witnesses, and we also have phone records that show on days in which uh, the major generic drug manufacturers increase prices, often in concert, there's a high frequency of phone calls, you know, phone calls that last for a minute, two minutes, five minutes, 45 minutes, between the major generic drug manufacturers in a highly unusual way. And so all of this evidence shows that there was overt brazen collusion and on price. And I guess what I would say to the industry is, what part of that is not true? Well, I mean, to be clear, you don't know what was said in those phone conversations. You just know what, that they took place. So what's, what makes you suspicious? No, actually, we have text messages and emails that memorialize um, what happened in those phone conversations. We have chatter after the phone conversations in which people say, look, I talked to this guy, I talked to that guy. It seems that this company is going to raise price on this drug and, and, and this other company is going to follow. It's that sort of communication. Um, coupled together, the text messages, the emails, the cooperating witnesses, again, who are telling us um, what's happening at these companies, and then the phone records. Putting that all together shows um, a practice, an industry-wide practice of collusion, again, in, in what is the largest corporate cartel in history. Uh, we're going to be talking to someone from the uh, generic uh, drug industry after this, what, but one of the things that they've said uh, it before in response to this lawsuit is that they say that overall the price of generic drugs has been falling. How do you, how do you respond to that? You know, they, they sent out a press release and they sent out a chart uh, that they say shows that prices have gone down a little bit uh, over the last three years. But what they don't mention is the same chart that they put out shows there was a huge spike in prices in 2012, 13, and 14. And this is where we saw prices go up 1,000%, 2,000%. On the drug I mentioned, doxycycline, the one I take, 8,000%. And there was just no reason for a spike in prices, no market explanation. Uh, and what we found is that during that time, these competitors were talking and they were colluding. You said that some of these texts memorialize the converse, phone conversations and they say who they talked to, but what in specific uh, is being said in these text messages. So what they're talking about is, um, you know, efforts by various drug manufacturers to raise prices. So on the one hand, you see communications about, you know, Teva, which is the focus of this latest complaint and the largest generic drug manufacturer in the world, uh, that Teva will raise prices on X day and another 
uh, generic drug manufacturer say Mylan will follow. And so there are overt conversations about specific manufacturers by representatives of specific manufacturers about price movements and how they're going to react to them. Uh, also, they talk about dividing up their fair share of the market and, and enforcing a market allocation or division of market share uh, by playing nice in the sandbox with each other. So it's that kind of language that shows that there's an overt agreement to collude on price and market share. In addition to stopping this practice, is, or trying to stop this, these practices, is your lawsuit trying to get any of this money back for the consumers? Yes, we're trying to claw back the billions of dollars that they stole from the American people uh, through what we believe to be one of the biggest frauds ever committed. Uh, on the people of this country. Connecticut Attorney General William Tong, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, John.